Good morning and welcome to Student Hub Live. Oh, I'm so glad you found us. And I'm sorry, our live button went AWOL this, missing, uh, this morning. So um, so welcome to the show. I know there are heaps of new people here um, today. And uh, my name is Karen Foley. I'm a lecturer at Student uh, at the Open University. And uh, one of my favorite uh, jobs is doing Student Hub Live. And I'm really excited today to be here um, to talk with everybody about first assessments. So I've been looking in the chat and when all of you heaped into the room, you were all talking about some of the stuff you were studying and how you're getting on um, and during this live event we're going to have a lot of fun talking to each other which is one of the main things that we like doing at Student Hub Live. Now what we do during these events is we aim to facilitate academic community and uh, offer a space for students to get together while learning some things and today as I said before we're going to be really focusing on first assessments what to look out for um, how to sort of nail those first things and then also how to learn um, as you progress in your studies so I've got some great guests lined up today um, but I'm going to introduce HJ who is on our hot desk um, he with Kirsten um, are going to be collating all of your comments and doing various things and talking about our task at hand which um, is to draw an Easter bunny so I've got some Easter bunnies here for inspiration and um, they kind of look like this and we've already had some entries but uh, we'd like you to scribble some down we're going to be marking them um, throughout today's program HJ how are you you're looking very Eastery I know I'm so excited I think uh, winter's finally over we're going into spring and uh, there's lots of chocolate about so what's there to complain about <laughs> but uh, it's going really well in the chat uh, like you said there's so many different things that we're studying uh, Tammy's doing law Liza's doing mechanical engineering um, Rifma is doing adult nursing Zoe's doing social work so it's fantastic that everyone's coming in and introducing uh, themselves but like always anything goes in the chat your thoughts comments questions for your guests and if you've got a top tip from the, doing your assignments I'd love to hear it as well and share, do share it in the chat but um, yeah we're looking forward to getting started today and uh, uh, I've had a, a few rabbit submissions from my own family but unfortunately <laughs> they sent them in late so they won't be marked today <laughs> Oh, well, you can still mark them, HJ. It's just that they won't be in for a chance to win a fabulous prize. We've had this amazing Student Hub Live merchandise in, actually. And so the people who um, came first in our competition, the first three are going to win some of our fabulous Student Hub Live merchandise. So we'll be sending those out. Plus, we'll be sending some pens and post-it notes to everybody else who sent us an entry beforehand. But don't worry if you haven't. It's all just a bit of fun because uh, we thought, what sort of assessment task can we do and mark in a very short space of time around this time of year? And and we did think that drawing an Easter bunny would be something simple to do. So um, grab a pen and paper and draw one and we'll be marking them um, towards the end of the show with Lynn. Right, I'm going to introduce our first guest, but before I do that, HJ, um, could you just uh, give us an indication of how to pin the chat um, and also show people um, how they can email and subscribe to the mailing list? Yeah, of course. So, uh, like everyone may have seen, the chat went so quickly this morning when everyone came in. And if, like me, it goes a bit too quickly for you, in the top uh, right-hand side, there's a little pin button, which means it doesn't uh, force you to scroll through. You can read it at uh, your own pleasure, which is great. <laughs> and uh, if you want to send something in to us, or if we miss something on the chat because it's so busy, just email us studenthub at open.ac.uk. And, of course, on our website as well, well we've got our mailing list as well so uh, if you sign up to that you'll be the first to know about all the upcoming events and all the different things that are going on with us Brilliant. Thank you so much, HJ. Well, let me introduce you um, at home to our first guest. I have um, Tyrrell Golding, who is a senior lecturer in education. Now, Tyrrell's done lots and lots of things in her time um, at the Open University, um, but she's a module chair and she also, um, which means that she oversees um, the whole module. Um, and as part of that role, she's in charge of assessment for those modules. So I'm going to talk to her a little bit about the ways that module teams design some of these things and think about what we're trying to do, really, because I think that once students sort of get to grips with some of these things it's, it's a lot easier to understand the role of assessment a little bit more holistically. Tyrrell how are you today? I'm very well thank you how are you? I'm all right I was expecting it to be sunny um, and I'm told the sun is coming tomorrow but you look very snug in your lovely warm hoodie there. I've got the heater on down by my feet as well <laughs> yeah I, I was sold lots of sunshine um, mm. but yeah at least it's not raining. Yes, well, it's raining here, but it's going to be sunny tomorrow, so I'm, I'm hanging out for that. <laughs> 
So Tyrrell, thanks for joining us. I wonder if you could um, give our students a little bit of an idea about um, how modules design assessment within the qualification um, and also the role that, that, that specific pieces of assessment have within that overall big picture. Thanks. Um, yeah, I think the first thing I would say to all the students is the assessment guide for your module is your best friend and probably you should spend more time looking at it, reading it, getting to know it um, than you probably think that you're going to give to it at this stage. Really, that should give you a sense of the whole um, module and how it will work and how each TMA usually will build on previous uh, TMAs or how they relate to the subject that you've been studying. I think particularly when students come in um, to a new module, TMA01 tends to be quite um, low in terms of the percentage of, of contribution to the module. And that's really because it's the first time your tutor will have the opportunity to kind of see how you're engaging with the subject materials, particularly at level one. It might be the first academic writing you've written for, for quite some time. And so it creates what um, I like to think of as a discussion that you'll be having with your tutor through your TMAs. So you'll submit your TMA. They'll give you uh, really extensive feedback. And I think Ola's going to uh, be talking about your engagement and relationship with your tutor later um, and then reading that feedback really clear sort of deeply if you like um, because that will be giving you feed forward and how you can approve your mark in your next TMA so it doesn't matter whether you're an OU student or um, a student at other universities I've worked at students quite often and I'm I can be terrible at this myself they look at the mark and then go few I've passed I'll read the feedback later. And actually the feedback is going to be the key element that helps you improve on each TMA that you submit towards your module. Mm -hmm. um, I think, sorry, Karen. No, no, I was going to say, go on, go on. <laughs> so so, um, so there is, there tends to be a waiting in your TMAs um, and, but, but each one is really important. Each one will be supporting you to develop a skill or, or be able to um, evidence your understanding of key ideas, which will prepare you better to do that final assessment. Um, I think to reassure students, level one is really, really important uh, and it's a really safe space for you to learn your academic voice and, and learning to write um, as appropriate to your academic subject. But those module marks don't contribute at undergraduate level to your final degree outcome. Now, that's reassuring, but please don't use that as a reason to not submit something. Um, it's really important that you try and submit every TMA, um, all your EMAs if you have them in your module, because the mark will start to show you where kind of where you are and how confident you're, you're getting. It'll also help you to, to think about how, what skills and, and um, knowledge you'll need to develop moving into level two as well. So it's really important to, to engage with study um, and, and give it your best shot and work, you know, work hard. Um, and I think sometimes we can get really caught up on loving a subject and, and the assessment, you know, sometimes I think sort of the assessment is something that we think about uh, sort of secondarily, um, particularly hearing that we've got some social work students and nursing students, you'll be balancing those with with your placements as well. Because I think so often, as you say, we, we focus on the content and what it is that we're trying to look at doing. And sometimes it's really easy to neglect the skills that maybe we're being asked to develop. But within that module design, you've sort of got the content there, but also you're asking students to do specific things. And you're doing that because you know that later on they're going to be using those things over and over again within different um, aspects of that whole qualification. So those skills are really important too, aren't they, Tyrrell? They are. So you might be being asked what you think is a bit sort of randomly to, to do a Google search, for example, on, um, for me, it would be policy around children and young people. But actually the skill there you're being asked to demonstrate or to build is a research skill that at level three, you'll be you know absolutely relying on. 
And when we ask you to look for policy, for example, we're trying to support you to build that practitioner skill of ensuring that you know what government agendas are and, and those kind of things. Um, so it's as important when you look at your TMAs or your EMA, if you have them, or your ICMAs, that you look at the words being used. And I'm, I love post-it notes. I love color coding things. Um, so I highlight those words. So you might be asked to describe, which is one of those key words, young people's policy. So that gives you the, the two things, the thing you're being asked to do, the description and the, the, the subject that the team want you to cover. And it's all in there. And I think, um, you know, really looking at the question, really reading the question is really, really important. And you'll find that your tutorials will um, talk about what you're being asked to do in TMAs. And if you're not clear, I'd, I'd suggest posting on the module forum or your tutor group forum, because you can bet your bottom dollar that if you're not clear, there's going to be somebody in your group that isn't clear either, and they will be really grateful to you. I have a mantra in all my kind of face-to-face -face classes or online. The only stupid question is the question you don't ask. And I'm really happy to be the stupid person asking the stupid question for everybody because I, you know, I know that if I'm not clear, there will be somebody else that isn't. And even if there isn't, at the end of asking the question, I will then be clear. Mm. No, absolutely, okay. absolutely. The, the other really important thing I wanted to end on, Tyrell, um, is something actually that Eliza, who, who was in the chat today, um, was talking to me about the other day, um, which is this notion of, of how we can get so hung up on failure and, and we can sort of become sometimes so terrified of, of you know getting a bad mark or maybe things um, aren't in our favour at home or whatever and we can't put in as much work as we would like to for our assignment. And you said something really, really amazing. I wonder if you could share about the difference between people who keep going and those who don't. Yeah, so um, I now have my doctorate. I've been studying for forever. Um, I failed one of my modules first time, at least one, at my undergraduate degree. I had to work full time to put myself through face to face. I was a sort of traditional student then. I'm um, sorry, sort of under 21 um, and a face-to-face a, a -face university. And then I did a postgraduate uh, master's course, signed up for a master's course, had to pull out of my um, dissertation module because I got made redundant and it, it the course wasn't working for me for a range of different reasons. When I first started my doctorate, I got so much feedback on my um, initial submission that I just felt humiliated. I, I really wanted to go and just drive home, hide under the duvet with my dog and kind of quit. Um, and for various different reasons, which we haven't got time to go into today, I ended up going to a meeting, having to go to a meeting that was student focused, so I had to be there. Um, and it wasn't chaired by me and it went really badly. But the chair just coped really well and stood up and just took it and, you know, and I thought if they can get a over a bad meeting, I can get over some bad feedback. Do I want my doctorate or not? Do I think my research is important or not? Because there are going to be setbacks. There are modules that you will study or TMAs that you do that just don't sing to you. And that's what, you know, they just don't fill your soul with joy. They're a trudge, they're difficult. You know, it's like hitting the wall with runners. Clearly I'm not a runner, but I hear it's a thing. Um, challenging days but having your eye on the prize so the only successful learner is the learner that doesn't give up because we all have those embarrassing moments we all have those failure points they are actually what teach us mm. Mm. They really are and I look back through some of those times that I've had where I've just wanted to lie on the floor with the dogs and you're right, Tyrell, they do teach you something at that moment they're so hard um, but when I look mm. back at my other degrees and various things I don't remember what I got but I certainly remember crying about some of those things that were really important at the time and and as you say it's yeah. just that keeping going so thank yeah. you so much for joining us and, and for sharing I think that that's um going to resonate with a lot of people at home so um so yeah that's well brilliant. good luck everyone in your studies we really want you to do as as well as you can and have a lovely rest of the session I'll be watching online brilliant thank you so much Tyrell that's wonderful HJ how is everybody else doing back at home well, we're doing really well. Um, 
I am slightly jealous as uh, around Southampton and Bristol, it seems to be very sunny. So uh, hopefully Terry can send some of the sun from Bristol down our way in Wales. <laughs> um, we've got lots of great tips as well in the chats for uh, using feedback well. So um, Eliza keeps them in a file to uh, quickly refer back. Uh, Jennifer creates a, a SWOT analysis for feedback as well. So looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats, which is fantastic. And uh, Paula's got a great tip as well. If you're starting out or looking to start uh, in uh, October uh, is starting an open learning course because there's lots of course on English learning skills and study skills as well that are really useful for you to get set up. So there's so many great tips and we started talking about our bunnies as well. Um, you may oh, see yeah. behind me that my family's had a, a good attempt at it. Uh, unfortunately I'm not that artistic so this is my quick attempt so I'm going to see how I do. Oh, <laughs> how I do. Good, so that's my good. little bunny there. Thank you. I'll you see uh, how busy. I do later on. <laughs> but, you, you may be uh, yeah, able to eat of... your Easter bunny in the background. That's it. <laughs> well, you do fingers well. crossed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, some people are asking about uh, sending in the bunnies. We um, we did have uh, lots of people send in their fantastic bunnies, which we'll look at later. But if, like me, uh, you want to quickly join in and uh, join in the task and see what's coming up, then uh, you can always do that. <laughs> Yeah, that would be lovely. We do actually in our Adobe Connect workshops, we do lots of workshops at Student Hub Live and we like collecting lots of things. Mainly though, we like, um, well, I like cat and dog pictures and Isabella likes pictures of cakes. So we sort of compromise on the two and get people to send us in these things, which we show at the beginning of our sessions. So if you've done a wonderful bunny, do send it to the Student Hub Live email box and uh, we'll have a special slide for our Easter bunnies to celebrate at our next event. So you can see that email on the screen, just ping us your, um, your picture and we will put it in our next D Adobe Connect workshop. Great. Okay, so it's all going very well at home, I think. Uh, let me introduce you to our next guest now, um, who is an associate lecturer or a tutor. Um, Ola um, is joining us today, and uh, I wanted to talk to him about the things that people commonly misunderstand or get wrong. Ola, how are you today, and what's the weather like where you are? I'm fine. Um, weather not. It's okay. It's okay. It's sunny-ish. Uh, I live in Luton, so kind of East England. So when when people say it's sunny, I kind of mm, but it, it's okay. It's enough to get out for a walk. Good, good. Well, that's lovely. Well, thank you for joining us today. I wanted to talk about some of the um, common misconceptions that students have. You've been um, teaching for a long period of time, so you must have seen it all. What are what are the things that that um, in particular very new students often um, maybe maybe get a little bit uh, sidelined with? I think it goes back to what um, Tyrrell was saying earlier. It's it's about trying to understand the question. That is really the key thing. So when you do get your first TMA, please do look at the keywords. So example, you might have keywords at, at level one. You most likely will have keywords such as analyze or maybe explain or describe, identify, outline, reflective. So try and look that key, look, underline that keyword first. So what are they asking me to do? So have they said, please identify five common mistakes a student makes. So you know that identify means I just I need to point them out. If they say describe, then I need to give a bit more detail. So it's I, I, I note the thing, what it is, and then explain it a bit more. Now, going back to what Cyril said again, not kind of building on what she said, always ask. Don't sit in silo. Do not sit in silence. The key thing with us being distance learning is that you do actually have an opportunity to ask questions beyond the classroom. So you can be in a tutorial and think, well, actually, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to be the one that asks a stupid question. I'm going to be a bit shy. OK, fine. But I can ask and I can email the tutor later or I could put the question on the TGF. And that's what you need to do. So always clarify from the tutor what did that actually mean? How does that, how can I explain that in a bit more detail? And all tutors at the OU, and I'm saying this in a general point of view, will give you that extra information. They'll come back to you and say, well, this is what it means, that's what it means, and I'll give you a phone call, chat to you over line, and at least you've got to get that clarification. Because at level one, the first thing is not to think that, oh God, if I get it all wrong, or if I don't ask these questions, no, don't be, don't be, don't be worried. 
we are all here to learn, even us as, a, as I myself as an associate lecturer, I'm still learning from students and I'm here to be, and we're all here being very absolutely supportive. So please ask and ask for clarification. We are here to support you at every given time. Well, I was talking to some students the other day and they were saying, you know, I got the feedback and um, and I realised that um, I thought that they were asking um, a question that was a lot more complicated. I didn't realise that it was that simple. Um, so, you know, very often I think we can meet a question and think, oh, gosh, this is very interesting. I might write a little bit more about it. Or we can maybe think, well, that's far too simple and easy. They don't really want me to do that. What, what can you tell us about um, the, the student notes and also the corresponding um, marking notes that sort of mirror that in terms of the expectations? Mm -hmm. Expectations um, that students could look out for. Yeah, uh, adding to what Cyril said earlier, so we every module have an assessment guide. Please access that assessment guide every time you're about to write a TMA. It's really important you do that. That's the first thing. The next thing is always look at the guidance notes for the TMA. After every TMA, um, on your online, you will see when you click next, it will say TMA guidance notes. And please read through the guidance notes. If you're not clear, again, ask your tutor. Those guidance notes tell you specifically what you need to write. And you know, I know what Karen is saying is true. Sometimes you're thinking, that's a bit too easy. They're, of course, it can never be asking me just to write a, you know, a 200. Yes, that's what it is. <laughs> it, 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 don't, don't over exaggerate yourself. Don't over exert yourself. If they said, write five things, write the five things don't write anything beyond it because you don't get extra marks for writing something additional to what you've not been asked to do so keep clear by looking at the guidance notes follow those guidance notes and if at any time you're thinking i'm not too sure again refer back either to the assessment guide or the tutorial that you attended refer back to the recording uh, most um uh, lecturers give out the guidance notes in terms of the tutorial notes, the slide deck, that one minute, you can go back to access that or last given chance, email the tutor or contact the tutor just to clarify that situation. Brilliant. Thank you, Ola. Now, can you tell us about the tutor marking notes and, and how you actually go about marking assignments? Um, so, so two things there, really, I guess. One is about the criteria that you're looking for, um, which, as we said before, is, is sort of closely related to those student notes. Um, and the other thing is is in terms of the feedback that you give the students and, and how they might sort of meet that feedback. OK, uh, so as, we, as, as Karen said, um, tutors have a tutor guide for all the assignments we mark, they're, all, they're called TMAs. And um, we, we have to follow those guided notes. We can't go off tangent. We can't say, well, I thought the answer is this. No, they're specifically given a set of criteria you need to mark with. And then you give the feedback based on what you have marked. So for example, in terms of content, um, you may have been asked to describe a theory or critique a theory or a concept. We will then use our professional and academic judgment to see whether you have fitted within the criteria that we've been given to mark two. And then we'll give you feedback. We might say, for example, if you had explained that key point with a bit more depth, you could have got extra marks. Or we could say, that's really an excellent critique. I like the way how you opened up the concept and you use an example from your academic practice or your social practice or your coaching practice, whichever academic practice you are. And you've been able to link the practice you have to theory. And once you've done that, again, you get the marks for it. So we then give you that feedback. So the, the question here that students need to be very aware of is that feedback, um, tutor feedback comes in two forms. Um, you will have your marked TMA, okay, and your PT3 feedback. Um, there is a web link um, that I think we will be able to show you later on, which shows you how to collect your TMA feedback. And in that place, in that link on that website, when you click on your TMA feedback, it gives you two choices. When you click on it, it's a zip file, and on that zip file, you can open up the tutor marked TMA and open up the PT3 feedback. Now the tutor marked TMA is your TMA marked with tutor comments, most likely in the right hand side in the comments. And um, some tutors put the comments within the uh, within your TMA itself. Okay, that's it, there you go, that's it, that's it. And what will happen is when you read on the right hand side, 
okay, of your feedback, you will see the tutor giving you feedback regarding what you have written. They might highlight a particular key point and say, yes, that was really great, um, but you could have added a bit more depth. Or they might say, um, oh, you didn't reference this correctly, but here's the correct way to reference. And also here's access to the referencing website so you can have more detailed guidance. So you look at those comments, and then when you click on the PT3, the PT3 will summarize those key comments, but also give you key actions on what you need to improve on. Now, what tends to happen with level one students, and it's what Tyrrell uh, said, also first thing that they think about marks, but actually sometimes marks is, doesn't give you the real picture of what has happened. So don't worry about the marks, look at the feedback. What have I done well? What haven't I done well? What can I improve on? And then you lead that to feed forward into your next TMA. And at the same time, even if the, the marks are low, again, look at the feedback. So have I, oh, I've done that well. That key, is, oh, that key skill of academic reference is great. I was able to critique well. What I wasn't able to do was maybe write my um, essay in the, in the format that I should have. Okay, I'll look at that. So it's just about looking at those pointers and using it to feed forward into the next TMA. Mm, no, absolutely, Ola. And I think we've heard some really good advice from students before about ways in which they sort of capture that feedback so that they can really start working with it next time. But just to end, Ola, I just wondered if we could talk a little bit about some of those, um, uh, well, the relationship between marks and things. Um, because we were talking the other day, sort of saying, you know, students might say, I got marked down because I hadn't formatted my uh, TMA right, or I got marked down because of my referencing. And sometimes tutors will comment on things that, that can be really, really superfluous. And um, referencing is not really superfluous, but it may not have any marks associated with it. You may have like five comments about references um, and think, oh gosh, this is a big issue. But one comment about maybe not answering the question could be seen as one out of five things. So could you just give students a sense of how they might steer that proportion in terms of collating that feedback with that student note to see sort of mm -hmm. the, the, the big things to work on? Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a fine art, and uh, this is my advice to students. Most of the time, tutors would tell you categorically that you lost marks for this specific comment that they have made. That's one thing you need to look for. Key things that you need to be, need to be, you will not lose marks for not using the right format of, an, of a TMA. So for example, you don't have a header, you don't have a footer, you won't lose marks for that. You will not lose marks for referencing for the first, yet you will be given for what we call formative feedback on how to improve your referencing. And you won't lose any marks, it will be supportive through that key thing. Where you do not, well, what I say, not, not, where you lose marks in any TMA is about the academic content. Have you answered the question? So if they said identify and you've gone off and you've actually done a really elaborate self reflection of yourself, well, you haven't answered the question. And that's why you, you, you will lose marks. Content, always think about the academic content. For example, you may have four theories that you might need to tackle. Um, as a social worker within a particular TMA. And the question could have been, can you um, please describe and then critique one of the following theories? So you've got to focus on, okay, I need to explain the four theories, but only critique one of them, okay? And it's that bit that you need. So when you're looking at the comments from the tutor, it's think about content, academic content. If the academic content is where I've got a, what you will call not super risk, but many comments about me not meeting that criteria because there's also the uh, key assessment criteria, then you know, okay, that's where I've lost marks. Where you they've talked about referencing or maybe spelling mistakes or type of errors, you don't lose mistakes, you don't lose points for that. That's more about just building up those skills for, for you to move forward on. And, and, and when I was a student, I'd always used to um, say, oh, but can I do two? 
And I'd go, no, you can't. You've got to <laughs> critique one thing. Oh, no, but it's too irrelevant. And, and then it took me ages. And only eventually do I see they wanted depth. They wanted me to go into a lot of detail about mm -hmm. things. And that's yeah. why they said one. But, yeah, I always used to, used to raise my heckles when I was told to only critique <laughs> one. But, um, but as you say, you know, that's because that's the objective of the task. Yeah. So that's been really yeah. solid advice. Thank you so much, Ola. Um, maybe welcome. you can stay online and chat to some students as well if you I can will. log back I into will. stadium. That would be okay. Okay. Perfect. Um, so that, right, that's then. absolutely brilliant. So, so the main point is that um, you can lose marks in the TMA if you if you don't answer the question that is set. And I think that's one possibly one of the hardest lessons um, we all have to learn. Um, HJ, how is everybody doing at home, and how are you bearing up with uh, with your props? Um, uh, mine are looking very delicious right now. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's terrible. I should never have to do a bigger breakfast. It's too tempting to have all the chocolate behind me. <laughs> but uh, we're doing really well in the chat. I know. Um, a lot of us are very encouraged by what Ola's saying. Uh, Chris did say, I wish I'd had those words of yours months ago. <laughs> and uh, Joanne is finding it very interesting as well, which is fantastic. I know uh, we did uh, have some worries about our um, uh, grammar and spelling and things like that. So it's great to get that assurance from Ola that uh, although we may get tips from our tutors, it's not the main focus of the marking. It's what we're writing rather than how we're writing it. Uh, to put it one yeah. way, but uh, Kristen's been there, uh, or Kristen's helping me in the chat as well. There's loads of great links and resources for some of these tips as well that Kirsten's, uh sharing with us on uh, brushing up on some of our skills as well. And if there's any tips or uh, resources that you think would help others, share them in the chat as well. We do love to see those there. That would be absolutely perfect, yes. And thank you, Kristen. It's always lovely to have our colleagues from our student support team who are so super helpful. So if there's ever anything that you're stuck on, normally it's your um, tutor who is your academic point of contact, but also the student support team are great um, to be able to talk about loads and loads of other things there as well. And at the end of the show, I'm gonna show you some resources from the Help Center, which is another go-to place. Um, they've got some really good things like process and content word activities, all sorts of PDFs and, and uh, activities that you can do um, around submitting TMA. So I'll show you some of my favorites that are relevant here, but there is lots and lots of support available um, to you as OU students. So let's talk to an OU student next. Uh, we have Tala joining us all the way from far away in, in Kuwait. Um, and Tala is a first year health sciences student. So Tala, how are you today? And what's the weather like over there? I bet you have more sun than we do. Oh, we, I think we're muted, Tyler. Let's see if we can get your sound. Is it working? Yeah, that's perfect. How are you? Okay. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? <laughs> I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Is the weather nice there? Yeah, it's very sunny. Very, very mm. sunny. Oh, you're, we're very, very jealous, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so tell us then about um, your experiences. You've just done two level one modules that you did um, mm -hmm. together. Um, and so you've done lots and lots of assessment during that time. I wonder yeah. if you could tell us how you experienced um, some of your first pieces of assignments. I was very nervous because it was the first piece of assignment that I would have done that was judged in the sense that it was going to be marked and I was going to get um, feedback to improve on. But I was also really excited because it was my first step towards my qualification and it really made me feel like I was a real student at a real university. Mm, absolutely. And I think those assessments are, as you say, part of the thing that you perform, you behave as a student when you're doing those and, and mm -hmm. getting those marks back is very important. So can you remember then um, when you were first sort of submitting assignments, what, what were things that worried you um, about the whole process? I was really worried about feedback because I couldn't tell, I wasn't really sure whether it was personal criticism. Now I know it's not. Now I know that it's given to help me improve, but I was really worried about it back then. And when I did get back my first assignment, thankfully it went well, but I was really nervous that this was the best grade that I would ever get as a student. And um, thankfully that was also wrong. I did maintain good grades, but there was a lot of pressure throughout the year to maintain those good grades. So I think um, I, I'm pretty sure that I'm not alone feeling that way. 
No, I, I've heard so many students say that. And in fact, very often, because often the first piece of assessment is very lightweight, you know, a few hundred words, it's very easy to do well because it's less complicated. Um, so very often students will sort of see um, a fluctuation of grades as things get more complex and different tasks are assessed. How did you sort of deal with that notion? I know so many students see it as a, as a trajectory. I'm getting better. And that sort of equates to an increase in grades over time. How, how did you make sense of it? I think it's a learning process. I think as you go through your first year, you get used to the idea of um, just because I don't do well on every single TMA doesn't mean I'm not doing well overall. And I think you learn to work with the feedback to kind of maintain the grades that you want to start getting. And if that's not working, then uh, you start to reach out to your tutor and create that relationship that does help you improve your grades. Mm. Okay, brilliant. Now I've asked you for some advice um, to give to other students based on your own experience. And I wonder if you could first tell us a little bit about how you've worked with feedback. So the feedback that Ola was talking about earlier. Yeah, so um, at the beginning, I was really reluctant to apply feedback, um, particularly for one skill that I had done my whole life and it worked well the way I was doing it my whole life. But um, it kept coming over, up over and over again in my feedback. and. Um, I didn't really understand how to apply it, so I reached out to my tutor and they were really helpful. So I think read through the feedback, try to understand where you can apply it, and if that doesn't work, then reach out to your tutor because they can help. Brilliant. And we've, we've been talking before about how level one is the sort of playground to make mistakes and to really learn. How did you deal with sort of some of those, not mistakes, but learning experiences? Yeah. Um, when I first started, like any other student, I wanted to do really well. And um, despite being told that level one doesn't count towards my classification, sorry, um, I was still really nervous about every assignment that I submit. But I think throughout the year, um, you just learn to appreciate your mistakes more because I realized I was learning more from the mistakes than the marks that I was getting, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Someone's at the door. <laughs> the dogs are barking. Yep, they're off. They're off. Um, <laughs> oh, or post post a post time of day. Now they'll come back. Here we are, Coco. There we are. You can have the bunny. Aww. She likes the bunny. It's the top tip. Um, now, um, the other thing is that you do a lot on um, social media and um, you, you're often posting some of these WhatsApp groups. And I've seen those at the OU, which are really helpful. Students are often really keen to join groups. And I know it's a space where students will share various things. What's your advice around sort of um, assessment and social media? I think social media is great. It's a great source of support, or it can be. I know some people don't like to use it, but when it comes to assignments, I would always suggest that if you have any questions, please go to your tutors or um, use your module forms because that there are so many risks associated with um, asking questions related to TMAs on social media. And you'll get a lot more accurate advice and guidance if you use your tutors or the module forums. Yeah. No, absolutely. I, I've heard so often, you know, well, we all agreed in our WhatsApp group that this was the right approach mm -hmm. as everyone's sort of gone on a completely different track. And and the final thing I wanted to talk to you about is, is your expectations, because you you sort of you seem to view this as a learning experience. And as you say, you're learning more from some of the sort of things that maybe don't go well, as opposed to the things that do. What would you say to, to other people who may find that a bit hard? I would say the main thing to remember is that perfection and high grades are never expected. Um, this is an expectation and pressure we put on ourselves. So please don't be too hard on yourself and you're here to learn. Um, so just be patient with yourself, apply the feedback, speak to tutors or student support if you need them. And um, yeah, enjoy the journey. I think that's one thing that we forget to do. Yeah, no, absolutely, Tala. Well, thank you very much. Um, and you've been writing some fab tips as well um, that, uh, that are great to see being shared. And, and thank you for joining us today. That's been brilliant. Thank you for having me. Okay. No, it's a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Lovely. And it's nice to see some of the people um, who are in our chat. I know there are lots of regulars there today um, and lots of new people as well. Um, but we do like to all get together and share our experiences. So it's always very lovely to see people on camera also. HJ, how is everyone at home doing? We're doing really well, as always, very positive and supportive in the chat. I know there's lots of people in the chat that are nervous for their first assignments, but uh, there's so many people saying that you can do it and uh, we're all a very supportive community. But um, 
Kirsty says that uh, my tutor is very, very helpful. And uh, I think uh, all my tutors have been absolutely amazing as well. So like Tar Tala said, building a relationship with your tutor is probably one of the keys to success. And if you're not sure about anything, your tutor um, will be more than happy to help you. So don't be nervous about speaking to them. But um, yes, we've got Ola in the chat as well, which is absolutely fantastic. And Kirsten's posting uh, lots of top tips and resources as well, which is amazing. So we're having a great time in the chat today. It is going really fast. So just a reminder of that pin button in the top right. So uh, if like me, you struggle with reading things very quickly, put that pin button and it stops it scrolling through. And if unfortunately we do miss anything, uh, uh, just because there's, there's so much going on, just email us studenthub at open.ac.uk and we'd love to get back in touch with you and help you. Oh, thank you, HJ. That's wonderful. Good. Well, has everyone drawn their bunnies at home? <laughs> or we got side we have uh, from the task at we, hand? We always, we always get sidetracked. I mean, we, we loved uh, hearing <laughs> from Tala. And uh, it's always great to hear from a fellow student, knowing that uh, we're all in the same boat and we all feel the same way. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing how my uh, bunny stands up. So uh, if everyone else in the chat wants to have a quick go, or get your bunnies at the ready. <laughs> and we'll see how we do together. <laughs> Oh, I've lost mine. I've given it to Coco, who's uh, probably going to dismantle it. Very <laughs> She's a monkey like that. She really is. <laughs> Up there they go, back on the chair where they belong. Great. Well, let's um, get Lynn here, who has the marking criteria for our bunny and is going to explain to us um, the very reason for all of this madness. So, Lynn, welcome. And, and how are you? And what's the weather like where you are? You're looking very lovely and bright today. Well, I am fine, thank you very much, Karen. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. good. You haven't yes. started on that bunny behind you yet? No, I've, I've uh, this one, um, no, I oh, haven't. Oh, the one, but the one, one to the side of you, yeah. Very, no, no, I haven't, but I've been looking at it, thinking, oh, it's sort of maybe melting a little bit. But no, I haven't. I've got all this chocolate, Lynn. It's just ridiculous. I've got so much chocolate here. There's not even enough space to display it all. But um, it's really, really bad time of day to have all of this here for me. <laughs> Karen, do you not realise there's been a lockdown on for the last year? So we're all meant to be <laughs> trying to get out looking beautiful and sylph like So chocolate is banned in my house at the moment. Totally Aww. banned. No chocolate. <laughs> no chocolate. But it's lovely and sunny here, as you can see. The sun's shining in, so I had to adapt to my room because the sun was oh. shining right in front of me and I couldn't see anything. So I've had to pull yes, the blinds a bit. Good. It's not good for the lighting, is it? But, um, but lovely not for the, for the uh, mental lighting. state of mind. <laughs> Brilliant. Indeed. Now, Lynn, you saw our trailer. Um, so let's uh, think about our task. And I know that everyone's very keen to um, to start thinking about um, uh, the bunnies that we've got. And I'd love to be able to show some of the ones that we've also um, had sent in. So firstly, um, do you want to explain um, the method behind the madness of our task? Well, um, I had to come up with a criteria for marking these bunnies that came in. Um, so a bit like Ola was saying about um, the, all the TMAs come in and they are assessed against a criteria. I had to come up with a criteria for marking the bunnies, which was not at all easy. So um, it was a really hard task to come up with that criteria because I'm a real softy when it comes to marking. <laughs> so yeah, I, I came up with this criteria and I thought, right, I've got to stick to it, even though they were brilliant, all of them. They were amazing, actually. So, Lynn, talk us through some of this criteria then, and we can see sort of how people at home may be able to grade their own bunnies. Um, and then we're going to um, show people um, some of our ex excellent specimens that we've had here. Well, the first thing is it had to be a drawing, all right, mm. because the okay. task said a drawing of a bunny. So for it to be successful, it had to be a drawing. Now, you know, if people wanted to take pictures or, or everything else, was that a drawing? So first of all, had to be a drawing. Brilliant. So that okay. was my so that's first an important criteria. Thing. And something yep. that um, we had an excellent entry that was not a drawing. Um, so that unfortunately meant that it didn't meet that criteria very well, even though it, it was very it, excellent. It was a beautiful, one was a beautiful photo of a bunny. It was, it was amazing. But it wasn't a drawing, it was a photo. So unfortunately, that one 
beautiful bunny look. Oh, I mean, how could you not just oh, fall for that fluffy thing? I know. Uh, lovely, and the whiskers and lovely. But was it a drawing? Did it meet what Ola was saying? Did it meet what at the process of the task was? And the process was a drawing. Brilliant. So that very simple word in the instructions has been um, really important in terms of criteria. What was what was the next piece of criteria? Well, it had to be the content. The drawing needed to draw on the requirements outlined and include a bunny and a critical selection of Easter things because it was an Easter bunny. So it needed to mm. contain something like chocolate or an <laughs> Easter egg or chocolate or an Easter egg. As you can see, I'm yes. a bit fixated so by it had, it had to be adorned by Easter-like things. It did indeed, yes. So that was that, that was the content side of it. So did it have that content? Brilliant. And then, of course, we had to go on to the depths of treatment. So it had to have um, an awareness of what an Easter bunny was. And also, if possible, some innovative ideas. So some, some different ideas. So we had bunnies with, would you believe, masks, face coverings, and hand sanitizers. Now, really forward thinking bunnies there. Very, very topical. Excellent. And take us through the last two, Lynn, so that we can have a look and see what people have sent us. So the last one had to be a structure. There had to be, um, it had to be clear and organized. So there had to be some thinking behind what they were doing. And there was one fabulous bunny that was, um, it included the egg and the bunny in one go almost. So that was, I thought, really good as it was very clear. And um, lastly, the, the drawing had to be that the author's own work. And I have a feeling there may have been some submitted that used an iPad drawing, you know, the I've, not that I've ever done that, but the iPad drawing. And so that wasn't really the author's own work. It did use some IT. So I wanted to see it with their own hand. So that was my last Brilliant. criteria. Perfect. Now, shall we, um, well, HJ, um, what do people at home make of this criteria? How, how are the bunnies stacking up and how are your family doing, HJ, in terms of uh, the, the marking guides that Lynn has set? HJ, you're on mute. Unmute yourself. Oh, dear. <laughs> what have I told you about muting yourself when oh, you're on I air? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, I think uh, Natasha, like myself, has uh, forgotten that it's supposed to be an Easter bunny. So uh, myself and Natasha have uh, forgot to draw any type of chocolate or Easter eggs. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, what's really cool is uh, the picture of the bunny. Lisa actually tells us that it's a digital drawing. And I am absolutely shocked at how amazing it is. So uh, it did pass for a photo. So uh, we have to take our uh, hat off to Lisa for that. But um, yeah, we are uh, trying to mark our bunnies. I think uh, <laughs> we, we may have to uh, be kind to ourselves because we didn't know um, what we needed to do exactly. It was just a very short brief. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yes, and, and I think this is the key point Lynn was wanting to make with our brief is that, um, you know, very often we just see the task and go straight in. Um, and, and of course, it's very difficult to do things when you don't really understand what the marker's looking for and what they value as important, is it, Lynn? That's very true. That's why that uh, criteria that Ola was talking about is so important, because if you're doing an assignment, you really need to know what's being asked of you rather than just going off and doing your own thing. So, um, yeah, so it's like the, the, the photo of the bunny. Was that a drawing? It was a beautiful bunny, but was it a drawing? No. So not always the best one. The ones I saw, not necessarily the best ones one. It was the ones that were, you know, showing critical thinking and oh, that will be an innovative in their approach, like the hand mm, sanitizer. I, I particularly fell for that. Well, well, let's have a look then, I think, Lynn, and see what people did give us. And don't forget that the winners um, will be getting um, a nice pack of all of our lovely Student Hub Live merchandise. And uh, the people who run up will get um, uh, some note, uh, some very tiny post-it notes. I don't know why, but we've, we've gone for very, very small post-it notes, which are um, different, and, uh, and some nice pens. So, Lynn, let's take a look and see um, fr from the slides what submissions we've had in advance from our lovely students. And you might want to say... Uh, uh, some very brief comments about some of them. So we're going to, to start okay. with um, uh, this one here. 
Oh, I did love this one. Um, looking at the date on the painting, it looks like it may be a, a, a much loved pet. Um, and I really like this one. But I mean, what I had to say here was, yes, it was a bunny, but where was the connection to Easter there? Where was that egg or that chocolate? But it was, I have to say, a real soft spot for that bunny. Mm, very, very cute. And let's see our next one. Oh, yes, this, this was lovely. one that I think may have been done on possibly on some sort of technology. Some now, of course, somebody may be doing that because they can't draw because, you know, they may have a disability, which means they can't draw. So, again, it was a very good bunny and I love the bow. But again, it, it missed that Easter connection, that chocolate or the egg or something. But great bunny and great skills if that was done on a, an iPad. I think that was very, mm. very impressive. Absolutely. And it brings to, 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 to um, uh, mind the whole thing about what is drawing nowadays, because we often associate it as something yeah. you do with your hand, but, but very often we're using technologies as different ways of drawing. Um, so again, uh, a very interesting point there. Right, let's move yeah. on to the next one. Oh, oh, this was right. Now you can see this one's got the masks oh. hanging from the um, from the line above. So beautifully turned out bunny. And maybe some connection there because of um of the attire to the easter bunny but the masks were good but again just missing that bit about easter but was a bunny great i thought it was really good i have to say i really like that one very and the masks beautiful. Were great. don't we have some very talented people i don't know what everyone's oh. talking about with their assignment <laughs> i've got no idea because Karen, I tried to do one, and my Easter bunny, as you know, I love dogs, and my Easter bunny looked much more like, more like a dog <laughs> with long ears. So I have to say, I really took my take my hat off to all these students. Really good. Their mm. essays will be fantastic. They will, won't they? And I've got little Coco here who I managed to get in her Easter bunny things. I don't think I'll get them on her today, but uh, yeah. <laughs> She's just, she's just spied, spied the bunny, which I've now got back ha -ha, off me. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> let's see, let's see our next one again. <laughs> yeah, she, she, doesn't, she doesn't like them. I mean, I, I thought they were so dinky and cute, um, uh, but yeah. uh, I'll see if I can get them on her a bit later. But she's just not keen, which is fair <laughs> enough, I suppose. Right. Let's see our next entry. So this was a lovely entry and look, a big basket full of Easter eggs there. Um, I, I was slightly worried about the the wasp or the bee flying around the eggs thinking, oh, is that going to get it before I could get it? But um, a very good effort. I really like this one. A nice, simple drawing. Did all the things that um, it was meant to do. Nice, fluffy tail there. Great whiskers. So a really good drawing. I like that one. Brilliant. Excellent. And the next one. Oh, another oh. one. This is another one. Really well turned out, Bunny. Look at that big basket of eggs. Except I'm not sure if those eggs are chocolate. <gasps> there are a bit small. They might be proper eggs there. But um, again, beautifully turned out, <laughs> Bunny. Oh, what can I say about lovely. that? Lovely. And we've got a couple more. Now, I really like this one. This is, um, and this is a very clever bunny because um, I think if you, this is the one that has got the degree in um, exology, I think it is, BA, <laughs> uh, the BA honours in exology. So lovely, great big basket of eggs, uh, mortarboard as well, beautifully shaded. I thought this was a really cracker. This was a lovely one. So Absolutely did all that what we were asked of it and more because obviously it's a very clever bunny. It is a very clever bunny. Oh, and as this is one's this lovely. very clever bunny too. <laughs> so this is a you know graduation. Um, I've seen people walk across the stage in many outfits, and I'm always fascinated by the shoes. But I've never seen a bunny walk across the stage. If I ever do, then I might wonder what I've um, had to drink beforehand. <laughs> but no, this is a very clever bunny, and I love the uh, the sort of just the whole composition of that one. The basket, the even got their degree in their hands. So great. Great effort that one was. Brilliant. Okay. Oh, this uh, is cute. And this is a really good one. I love this one. I wasn't quite sure if it was a sort of like self-portrait because it did look like a sort of a human face in that bunny, but I didn't care because nice little paws there. And this is the one with the hand sanitizer in the rucksack along with the Easter eggs. So what can you say? That was a really good effort. That was oh, wonderful. No, that's amazing. And I think we've got one more, do we? And this is the one, look, 
it combines everything. <laughs> it's a bunny almost coming out of an egg with little feet at the bottom, very happy. Um, I really like I'm very jazzy too. Typical OU student here. Some really sort of like, you know, love the drawings on it and the markings on on the egg. So yeah, I really like this one. A good Brilliant. bunny. So we've had some wonderful entries um, and our winners, would you like to announce our winners? Oh, have I got the winners here now? The winners uh, are do. on my piece of paper, yes. Um, hopefully I've got it on here on my piece of paper. So I think Justin was number one and that was the, um, the, one, the last one we saw. Yep. And then second place went to Chris. And, oh, I can't remember that one. Yes, I really like that yes. one. So second place went to Chris and third place went to Lizzie, which Brilliant. is what can you say about that, that clever bunny graduating. So, yeah, that, that's how I did it. But it was a very hard ask. Next time you ask me to do something, please make it easier. <laughs> we will we will but you did very very well marking that some some amazing entries and i think that it just shows that you know it's all based on that criteria that we've had we've had some amazing entries yeah. so lisa stephanie beatrice christina ella jennifer and jody you will all um runners up and you will receive some lovely little bits of merchandise um and lizzie and chris and justin well done and you will get um, slightly more student have live merchandise but thank you so much for sending that in and, and for such amazing artwork it's been absolutely wonderful Wonderful. just rounding the dogs up here at the moment um, and that is all, all we have time for so it just uh, leaves me to say thank you very much Lynn for, for that fun activity and to see HJ how everybody is doing as we sign off for the day well we're doing really well I think most of us are in awe about how amazing those bunny drawings were I have to say I don't think mine stacks up against them but if I'm marking it against uh, my drawing skills I think I've done rather well <laughs> compared to normal <laughs> but we've had such a, a whirlwind of an adventure when it comes to assignments and sharing tips and we're all very supportive of each other um, do stay in touch and uh, sign up for the newsletter as well so you can join us at our next events through the website and like I said if there's anything that we missed because there was so much brilliant stuff going on just email us studenthub at open.ac.uk and I'd like to thank Kirsten as well for all the fantastic uh, links and resources and help that Kirsten's been helping with us today and yeah thank you for everyone to join in I can't wait till next time Oh, brilliant. Thank you, HJ. Well, we do have lots of other um, events for you. Um, so check out our calendar. We advertise them um, three weeks before each event. So we have a, a packed schedule for like forever. Um, but uh, do make sure that you subscribe to our newsletter um, where you'll find out about um, some of the important things that we want to share with you and also what events that we've got coming up in the future. So just look at that from the uh, Student Hub Live website and uh, make sure you pop your email in that um, and subscribe to see what we've got going on. We do limit um, the number of tickets to all of our events which are all free um, so make sure that you do um, grab yours we've got lots of things coming up in terms of critical thinking essay planning and writing um, and uh, our fabulous note-taking workshop so lots there to keep you inspired but we also wanted to share some resources from you um, I'd mentioned earlier the help center which you can access from your student homepage is a really really good source of support and there's just a couple of um, resources that I'd like to draw your attention to um, the first one uh, is preparing your assignments now, this is a PDF, um, but it's got really, really useful information in it. Um, it talks a little bit about various techniques of mind mapping, some of which we've covered in our note taking session. Um, and then there's also, um, as we were talking before, about the importance of understanding the question, um, some really good advice there. And it details um, content words and process words. And it also gives you definitions of what's in there. So a really nice um, thing to have uh, to hand at all times. Also things on introductions and conclusions. And and paraphrasing, quoting and referencing. So some really, really good um, advice here um, and also techniques that you can use. Plus, we've got information on our Student Hub Live website as well. Um, around submitting TMAs and technical troubleshooting um, if you need those uh, and uh, and lots of other things there as well. So make sure that you um, get those from the website or you can do a quick search in the Help Centre. 
So that's all we've got time for today. A very quick hour, but um, I really hope that you have enjoyed the event. I hope you've enjoyed connecting with each other, that you're feeling a bit happier and more upbeat um, and that we can all learn and go forwards from here. So if you've got any feedback, please email studenthub at open.ac.uk. Um, and as I say, please do join us at another event very, very soon. But bye for now and thank you so much for being here.